Thank you, Clive. Good morning, everybody, and welcome to our Sunday morning service, and uh, a special warm welcome if you're joining us on YouTube. Today is Mothering Sunday. It's a Sunday when traditionally uh, people have gone back to their mother churches, and uh, I think we all look forward to being able to get back to our churches as soon as that's safe to do. Do join us on Thursday evening for our Lent course. Uh, the details of that are in parish news and on the website. And this Thursday we'll be looking at the Psalm of Ascents, uh, among other things. So if you'd like to know more, then do join us on uh, our Zoom meeting. As we start our service, a sentence from Scripture. As a mother comforts a child, so will I comfort you, says the Lord. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And, and also with you. And we say together, Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, Jesus Christ, to save us from our sins, to be our advocate in heaven, and to bring us to eternal life. So let's confess our sins in penitence and faith, firmly resolve to keep God's commandments, and to live in love and peace with all people. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbour, in thought and word and deed, through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is past and grant that we may serve you in newness of life to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, forgives all those who truly repent. Have mercy upon you. Pardon and deliver you from all your sins. Confirm and strengthen you in all goodness. And keep you in life eternal. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. And our opening hymn is Morning Has Broken. Jesus Christ, the child of Mary, shared the life of a home in Nazareth. 
and on the cross drew the whole human family to himself. Strengthen us in our daily living, that in joy and in sorrow we may know the power of your presence to bind together and to heal. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The first part of reading is from Exodus chapter 2, reading verses 1 to 10. A man from the house of Levi went and married a Levite woman. The woman conceived and bore a son, and when she saw that he was a fine baby, she hid him for three months. When she could hide him no longer, she got a papyrus basket for him and planted it with bitumen and pitch. She put the child in it and placed it among the reeds on the bank of the river. His sister stood a distance to see what would happen to him. The daughter of Pharaoh came down to bathe at the river while her attendants walked beside the river. She saw the basket among the reeds and sent her maid to bring it. When she opened it, she saw the child. He was crying and she took pity on him. This must be one of the Hebrew children, she said. Then his sister said to Pharaoh's daughter, Shall I go and get you a nurse from the Hebrew woman to nurse the child for you? Pharaoh's daughter said to her, Yes. So the girl went and called the child's mother. Pharaoh's daughter said to her, Take this child and nurse it for me, and I will give you your wages. So the woman took the child and nursed it. When the child grew up, she brought him to Pharaoh's daughter, and she took him as her son. She named him Moses, because she said, I drew him out of the water. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. The second reading is from Colossians chapter 3, reading verses 2 to 17. As God's chosen ones, holy and beloved, clothe yourselves with compassion, kindness, humility, meekness and patience. Bear with one another, and if anyone has a complaint against another, forgive each other, just as the Lord has forgiven you, so you also must forgive. Above all, clothe yourself with love, which binds everything together in perfect harmony. And let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts, to which indeed you were called in the one body. And be thankful. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly. Teach and admonish one another in all wisdom, and with gratitude in your hearts, sing psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs to God. And whatever you do, in word or deed, do everything in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, thanks be to God. to God. Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Glory, Glory to you, O Lord. Standing near the cross of Jesus were his mother and his mother's sister, Mary, the wife of Clopas, and Mary Magdalene. When Jesus saw his mother and the disciple whom he loved standing beside her, he said to his mother, Woman, here is your son. Then he said to this disciple, Here is your mother. And from that hour the disciple took her into his own home. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, you O Christ. Christ. Before Charlie comes to speak to us, we have our next hymn. I watch the sunrise, and the soloist will be Kim.
Well, thank you, Kira and Clive. Thank you. And so may I speak in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. So, Mothering Sunday, and we have some remarkable women in our story today, which Ian read to us from uh, the passage about Moses. We have the midwives who previously, before this story, Shipper and Pua, tried to save the Hebrew children when Pharaoh said that uh, these women, these midwives, should kill all the baby boys who were born. And then we come into our story and we have the remarkable mother of Moses who kept her child hidden for as long as she could until she brought herself to let him go in one last attempt to to spare his life. We have Miriam, the sister of Moses, who follows her brother downstream watching him. And then we have the amazing daughter of Pharaoh who takes in a Hebrew child, knowing full well that Pharaoh has commanded that these baby boys be killed. So she defies her father's wishes, the almighty Pharaoh. The Bible is full of amazing women who led God's people in the Old and in the New Testament. There were women like Mary and Martha who supported Jesus. uh, Women who, as in our reading today, had the courage to stand by Jesus at the foot of the cross. And women who shared in leadership roles in the early church, like Phoebe and Priscilla. On Mothering Sunday, there are those who would wish to see women celebrated but only in roles which deny them the opportunities to express the full range of their gifts, the gifts which God gives to all of his people. And traditionally, Mothering Sunday has exalted motherhood in a manner which places women in roles confined to their abilities in looking after children and their home. They're expected to be like Martha rather than sitting, learning at the feet of Jesus like Mary. And there have been times I can remember in services past and I've cringed at some of the the hymns that we sing celebrating what mothers do. Of course, this is true across the world and across time. Women denied the same access to educational opportunities as men. In our own country, it wasn't until the 1920s that women in Oxford were entitled to claim the degrees which they'd earned. I was watching a very good film this week called The Glorious, about Juliana Moore, uh, by, with starring jo- Juliana Moore. And it was about uh, Gloria Steinem, the feminist activist in America who, America who campaigned for women's rights. It looked at how she worked as a journalist, and she was a better writer than the men, but they expected her to make the coffee. Uh, how she worked undercover as a bunny girl to show the sexual exploitation and how she challenged structures which oppressed women and denied them their rights. And and, and often those uh, women who were oppressed shared their oppression with black people. At the time it was an oppression of women and an oppression of race. And women were not admitted to the Harvard Law School until the 1950s. And there's a beautiful um, passage in the film where she's challenged and uh, and her response to the, the male who's challenging her was uh, I didn't pay him to say that. Mothering Sunday is an opportunity to remember the rights which women are still denied, the way in which so many societies are still set up to discriminate against women. And patriarchal society is damaging to women, but it's also damaging towards men. Men are deprived of the balance which is so important for a proper functioning of society. God created men and women, and he created them with the gifts needed for things to work. Equal opportunities for women is fundamental to the proper functioning of our life and benefits all, including men. The biggest killer of men under 50 is men themselves. In more gender equal societies, men are half as likely to be depressed, less likely to commit suicide, Iceland's a very interesting point because Icelandic men have the highest life expectancy in Europe. And it's not just because they eat herring. Iceland has a small, smaller economic and social gender gap than any other country. Men need women in order to live life in all its fullness as God intended. And Mothering Sunday is a day to rejoice in all of the gifts of women and to recognise these gifts in women that God gives to the church 
and gifts which show us what God is like. Sadly, it's still the case that the church across the world denies women the opportunity to use the gifts which God has given them and sees maleness as the qualification to lead. To be female is to be required to minister in different ways than men, typically ways with less authority and commensurate with the patriarchal society. Theologically, this goes back to Eve, the eponymous representative of all the reasons why women are not made by God to have access to top jobs, which are reserved for men. And so, of course, we think of God as a man. And as we do so, we feel much more comfortable with many of the doctrines which men have produced to explain everything from the fall of humankind to salvation itself. And in so doing, we deny God in all of her fullness. It was in the 14th century that Julian of Norwich said, as truly as God is our father, so truly is God our mother. Never really caught on, sadly. But of course it wouldn't in a society which has formed its understanding of God in a male-dominated society. It's for this that Julian is best known in feminist circles, this understanding of God as mother. However, in many other ways, Julian of Norwich is a woman for our times and worth reminding ourselves about in this pandemic in which we've complained about being in lockdown. We know very little about Julian. That may not even have been a name. At an unknown point in her life, she became an anchoress attached to the church of St. Julian in Norwich. And she may have been identified by the name of the church rather than her own. What we do know is that on May the 8th in the year 1373, when she was 30 years old and suffering what was expected to be a terminal illness, she experienced a series of 16 visions which revealed aspects of the love of God and particularly the suffering of Christ on the cross. And following her recovery, she spent the next 20 years of her life writing down the things she had seen and pondering their meaning. And these writings became the first book written by a woman in English, The Revelations of Divine Love. Clearly she became known for her wisdom and for giving what we might now call spiritual direction to people who came to the church to seek her advice. And she died around the year 1417. Julian is particularly poignant because she lived literally in lockdown. Anchorites were walled into their cell next to the church where they served. From the day of their vows, they would never leave the single small room in which they lived. For some, perhaps for us in this pandemic, that might seem to be the worst of all possible lockdowns. But because of her experience of God's love, Julian was able to see things differently. Even in her solitude, she found in God hope. And perhaps her most famous words were, and all shall be well, all manner of things shall be well. And these too are words for our times. And all shall be well, all manner of things shall be well. In the last decade of the Church of England, we've tried to repent of the past and ministry has thankfully changed. But if only we'd been more open to the gifts of women in the church, women like Julian, who knows what we have denied ourselves. Today, the majority of the Christian church is still not open to all of the gifts of women. And so we are impoverished as a worldwide church. God's people are reduced in their vision and their experience of God. How many ministers of the Christian church, women like Priscilla's and Lydia's and Phoebe's, have we lost because of our prejudice? So on this Mothering Sunday, maybe see it as an opportunity to give flowers 
chocolates to our mothers, but also an opportunity to see how much better the world might be if women were able to show us a little bit more of God. Amen. Before our prayers, we listen to the next hymn from the Choral Scholars of St. Martin in the Fields. For Mary, Mother of our Lord, God's holy name be praised. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. 
for organisations and charities who work to help mothers in crisis. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For the work of adoption agencies and local authorities making difficult decisions about the welfare of mothers and children. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For those whose mothers have died, may they be comforted and may their loved ones rest in peace. We remember and give thanks for those who have died and we pray for them and their loved ones, especially Tony Alfred Hall. We light a candle to symbolise the light of Christ, which eternally shines and brings risen life. May the souls of the faithful departed rest in peace and rise in glory. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. And now we bring our prayers together in the words of the Lord's Prayer. Our, our Father, who, who art in heaven, heaven Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Janet. We come now to our prayer of thanksgiving. The Lord is here. His Spirit is with us. Lift up your hearts, we lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. Father, we give you thanks and praise through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, your living Word, through whom you have created all things, who was sent by you in your great goodness to be our Saviour. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he took flesh. As your son, born of the Blessed Virgin, he lived on earth and went about among us. He opened wide his arms for us on the cross. He put an end to death by dying for us and revealed the resurrection by rising to new life. So he fulfilled your will and won for you a holy people. Therefore, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we proclaim your great and glorious name, forever praising you and saying, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Lord, you are holy indeed, the source of all holiness. Grant that by the power of your Holy Spirit and according to your holy will, these gifts of bread and wine may be to us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, who in the same night that he was betrayed took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, 
in remembrance of me. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Lord, by your cross and resurrection, you have set us free. You are the Saviour of the world. And so, Father, calling to mind his death on the cross, his perfect sacrifice made once for the sins of the whole world, rejoicing in his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, and looking for his coming in glory, we celebrate this memorial of our redemption. As we offer you this, our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, we bring before you this bread and this cup, and we thank you for counting us worthy to stand in your presence and serve you. Send the Holy Spirit on your people and gather into one in your kingdom all who share this one bread and one cup, so that we, in the company of all the saints, may praise and glorify you forever. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread. Draw near with faith. Receive the body of our Lord Jesus Christ which was given for you, and his blood which was shed for you. Eat and drink in remembrance that he died for you and feed them in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. Amen. First communion prayer. Lord God, who blessed Son our Saviour, gave his back to the smiters, and did not hide his face from shame, give us grace to endure the sufferings of this present time with sure confidence in the glory that shall be revealed through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. And our closing hymn is we have a gospel to proclaim.
our closing prayer of blessing. May the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ.